Good evening. We're starting a little late. We had an attorney client meeting with our city attorney and it just we just came in here and we're just glad to be with the people in our community today. For some reason we're all pretty verbose out in the audience. But we'd like to to welcome you to the North Las Vegas City Council meeting this evening. There are two public forums aside set aside for public comment. One at the beginning of the meeting and one at the end. If you wish to speak, please complete one of the blue cards that are in the entry way where you came or off here to the left on the podium rail. Hand them to the city clerk. She sits right here to my left, and she will um, let me know they're there. And when I call upon you to speak, I request that if you could leave, limit your comments to more than three minutes and avoid repetition, that would be wonderful. Madam City Clerk, are we in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law? Mayor Lee, yes, we are in compliance with Open Meeting. Thank you. Tonight we have a special opportunity to have an invocation given by our very own North Las Vegas Pastor Dean Saner from the Discovery Church. Following that, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance as led by Councilman Churchill. Please rise. There it goes. Lord, we thank you today. We are privileged to be here among your people. And Lord, we pray, obviously, for, for wisdom for our city council. We thank you for the place that they've brought us from many years ago and to where we are now. Lord, we're cognizant of those who have struggled with this uh, virus and many who have lost their lives. We pray that your grace and peace would be with them. We ask for your blessing on every, every employee in this city, Lord. We thank you from the ones who are adjudicating things, the judges, all the way to those who are taking care of our streets and our city and our lights and everything that has to be done. Lord, we thank you for leadership, and I just pray that our city council would have wisdom as they make decisions, that they would have discernment so that they would know how to make wise decisions and not be, uh, not be led astray. And Lord, today, we thank you for those that are going to be receiving commendations and those who have done so much for our city that will be recognized. We just ask for your continued blessing, direction, wisdom, and guidance on all of our leaders as we move forward, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. And Dean, Dean was my neighbor for a while, and I sure appreciate seeing you. You're a good neighbor. Madam City Clerk, are we in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law? Mayor, yes, we are. Yeah, I think you guys We're going to move on to presentations tonight. Um, we have uh, Mayor Pro Tem Isaac Barone was going to present a certificate to the Business of the Month in North Las Vegas. Following that, we're going to have representatives from Sun City present a plaque to the Fire Department appreciation for the vaccination clinics that were held at Sun City Alianti Clubhouse recently. Damien and there's five others here, Damien, that are going to make this presentation with you. Lastly, we have a special guest tonight, uh, Councilman, Councilwoman Goins Brown. We're going to do a proclamation honoring Willie James Field Jr. for his dedication and contribution for the city, to the city. So, just that you recognize, the City Council, each person up here gets a district and they get to choose a business that they think is really spectacular in the area. And then I look for people in a community who have just given their heart and their soul and their time to make in North Las Vegas a beautiful place. And so this month, uh, you're going to find out one of the special jewels of North Las Vegas. And Ms. Goins Brown is going to, uh, to read this proclamation. So we're going to go down front, Council. Um, can we have uh, Dr. Mo? Well, his actual, his actual name is Dr. Cersei Moore, a uh, veterinarian. Can we have him please come on up? Thank you very much, Doc. Uh, you can stand here next to the mayor. 
Now, Mortuan uh, traditionally has been home to some uh, very storied uh, no, uh, North Las Vegas veterinarians. Uh, in the past, we, uh, we had, used to have Dr. Hux and Dr. Hicks uh, just down the street and around the corner here, over here at the uh, Cary Animal Clinic. I don't know if anyone remembers them. And then uh, the legendary Dr. Goldman around the corner here for the Civic Center uh, uh, Animal Hospital. Yeah, I remember them both pretty well. My son actually worked for, for, uh, for uh, Dr. Goldman there for a while. But uh, right now, there's only one veterinarian in all of uh, Ward 1. Now, the reason why I, I picked Dr. Mo is because, you know, um, the one thing about this uh, COVID uh, that it did for us, it exposed a lot of weaknesses that we had in our community. Uh, when it comes to public health, well, we got exposed. Um, here in North Las Vegas, uh, we have a fantastic uh, fire team and uh, our library service, which did a lot to help uh, the, the public and, and, and uh, really did a lot to um, uh, provide uh, vaccinations to, uh, to protect our, our, our residents. But during the COVID, of course, uh, you know, a lot of people wound up getting pets because they were stuck at home, right? Well, it turns out we were drastically uh, underserved when it comes to uh, veterinarian uh, services as well. And so uh, <laughs> during the COVID uh, uh, emergency here, I wound up getting a dog for the first time like in 30 years. And uh, when it came time for me to find a, a, vet, a, a veterinarian, found out there's only one, <laughs> one fellow, well, one uh, team doing that. And that's uh, Dr. Moe's uh, Kindred Animal Spirits. If you guys know a little bit about him as well, um, Dr. Moe, uh, uh, he, uh, he's, uh, uh, he's a veteran uh, from the Navy. He's also a Marine. Um, so, and and uh, I know he's very well educated. I forget the name of your school. What school did you go to? Tuskegee University. Tus Tuskegee University. There, there we go, right? So, I mean, he, he fits perfectly right here into our community. And uh, he and his team and uh, his a wonderful wife uh, is here with them. They provide invaluable amount of services uh, to our community, especially in the way and when we look after uh, our other vulnerable residents, our, our pets, our dogs and cats. So it's only, ma it's only natural that I would pick him for our, uh, our, our business of the month. So um, I'd like to make this presentation here to Dr. Moe's Kindred uh, Spirits Animal Hospital, located at 2437 East Cheyenne. For your dedicated service to the citizens of North Las Vegas by providing excellent care to our beloved animals who are cherished family members. Your passion, integrity, and professionalism are worthy of emulation. Best wishes for your continued success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, some words, maybe? First, I just want to say thank you for the award and the recommendation, uh, the, the accolade. Um, we enjoy being over here. I took over about three, four years ago um, to make sure that we do have an actual active veterinarian in, in the area. So, so one of the biggest things for me is just trying to make sure that we uh, serve the community, not just only get money, but kids come in, I ask them about class, make sure school's doing well. Um, give them another person they can talk to, and also probably be a mentor for minority kids who don't see any doctors around. But also my biggest and most important thing is just taking care of pets. And I thank you guys for allowing me to be here. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm the pets guy. Uh, pets and everyone, pets. Not pets and pets. And he's both. I, I don't, yeah. Congratulations and thank you for your service. Thank you, sir. Both the old service and the current service as well. Thank you. Yeah, uh, our, our pets are, uh, I don't even know if we can call them pets. They're, they're part of our family. Uh, and, uh, you know, we look at them as our children and how important it is to have a, a good qualified veterinarian that we can call. I could, I could tell you that where I live, I have uh, our veterinarian numbers pasted all over the house, you know, so I don't forget exactly who to call when I need them. But uh, I appreciate your service and, uh, you know, glad to have you here tonight. Thank you, sir. I'd just like to say congratulations. I don't have any four-legged fur babies. I just have fish. Okay. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> they're my babies, so. But um, I appreciate all that you do, and thank you for your service. And, again, congratulations. Thank you, ma'am.
Sounds like there might be a demand for an expansion, perhaps, of your clinic. <laughs> if you're the only one in this in this area, that'd be fantastic to bring on, expand, but uh, bring a great value and service. My mom, I lived on Brook Street, and my mom used to take our mangy dog to the animal clinic right there across from uh, the uh, Fort Cheyenne <laughs> Casino. I don't think that one's there anymore. So where, where's your office at? Is that yours? Yes, sir. Well, there we go. I'll have to come back there then. Yes, sir. Thank you. I should have brought pasta wings. <laughs> <laughs> you should, yeah. This next presentation, I think the mayor and I were having a little discussion about who was going to present it to this person in our community who really needs no introduction. To me, he's family. Um, we go back. We go way back, probably before the seed was planted. <laughs> I was a little girl. And um, when the mayor says, do you know who this is? And I said, really? So I'm going to present the proclamation to you, and then, Mayor, you can jump in with your comments if I ever get finished. So um, would you like to come up? Mr. Fields, Jr., do you want to bring your family up now, or we'll bring them up for pictures? Okay. Just listen to all the acclimates, and you do deserve this. And it reads, whereas Willie James Fields, Jr. began his community service by supporting the youth of North Las Vegas through sponsorship of Golden Gloves boxing teams, Little League baseball teams, and Pop Warner football teams. And whereas, when he became a member of the North Las Vegas Lions Club 37 years ago, he represented the club in various government boards and projects that benefited the city. He also served as founding chairperson of the community health centers and helped the Department of Energy create jobs with the abatement of asbestos, asbestos and lead from public buildings. And whereas his years of dedication to ensuring the well-being of our youth and furthering their interests did not go unnoticed as he later was chosen chairman of the Department of Labor Youth Council, which trained youth people, develop skills, needed to help them transition to adulthood with successful careers. And whereas he became president of the North Las Vegas Chamber of Commerce, he created a high-tech corridor and expanded the programs of the Community College of North Las Vegas by adding curriculums focused on training students for new technology, technology jobs. And whereas Willie J James Fields Jr.'s exceptional leadership of his local Lions Club propelled him to becoming the first ever district governor of the Lions Club from North Las Vegas, he then formed a foundation that provided free eye care services to kids in the school district and whereas among all his many successes, He's, his most notable is that for over 44 years, he has been a reputable and dedicated businessman in our community. Now, therefore, we, the City Council of the City of North Las Vegas, do proclaim April 7, 2021, as Willie James Fields Jr. Day in North Las Vegas and call upon our residents to join us in recognizing a great community leader for his contributions to the city. In witness there whereof, we have set our hand and caused the seal of the city of North Las Vegas to be affixed the seventh day of April, 2021. How about that? <laughs> I don't deserve this. Uh, I'm a citizen of this great city of North Las Vegas. And the reason being why I did all these things is because wherever I have been in the valley, I've had people say, oh, you couldn't give me a business in North Las Vegas. Oh, you never gave me a live in North Las Vegas. I said, oh, 
are you from? The planet Mars? There's people there that know our constellations. When I was president of the Chamber of Commerce, we had the general Jim Mills had a this I forget what it's called, but when a new recruit come into Nellis Air Force Base, on this document it says State of Mars Las Vegas. And I called my company. So with that, they said you just don't want our airmen to participate. And I said, okay, give me a good reason. And he came up with one good reason. And it fired me up. When I say fired me up, I've always been a champion of this community. My four parents moved here in 1938 with the dam project. My grandma, she worked as a lady in the potter room. My grandpa worked at Through that experience, when I got to Las Vegas, I knew everybody. Because, oh, you're so and so's prince. I said, yeah, I am. He said, so what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to follow in their footsteps. You know where that statue is on the corner of uh, Cary and uh, Martin Luther King's mm-hmm. statue? My great uncle had a gas station back in the day when most of the first African Americans were the gas. This was, they call it the Mississippi of the West. My dad was a great man. And then I look at the way the, the city of North Las Vegas has evolved into a metropolis, thanks to him. <laughs> I'm talking about the Mayor John. I'm proud of you. There has never been any progress that I have ever seen in this city in all of the years. I've always thought that, let me take a whole of this process and expand it on to the rest of the world. And then as I look around, I see all these warehouses, the high-tech corridors, the way the community college of North Las Vegas, that college should be named North Las Vegas College. (laughs) And I go on and on and on. Should be. But in saying all of these things, uh, I have my my oldest daughter, uh, or two daughters, up here to represent me as family. And I told the rest of them to stay away. (laughs) (laughs) And so these are the principles of my life, and the principles of my life. I'm hoping, in fact, I know they will take my place, especially because of this meeting, that it will be moving forward. I love the city of North Las Vegas. I think I told my daughter, I said, you know, pass, no funerals. I want to be cremated. <laughs> I told my daughter to cook me like I do like my catfish. <laughs> 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 I'm a Louisiana boy. <laughs> I know Miss Goins' daddy. I don't know Mr. Barone, but I know he's principal of the school. Oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a humble, I'm a humble high school yeah. teacher. Yeah, I, well, I, I knew your past and what you do. You I appreciate promote this. By the way, is that, would that be batter, a dip, it's, or no, bread? Oh, batter with cornmeal. Oh, okay. <laughs> just to, and just to, I want to give acknowledgement to Richard Churchill. He and I serve uh, on uh, the first responders committee that will promote veterans, firemen, and police. The thing that's going on with the police these days, all cops are not bad. When I first come to North Las Vegas, I went. The first police chief that I knew of was Bill Thorpe. He passed. So I knocked on his door and I said, I'd like to meet the police chief. He says, so what's the problem? I says, my daddy told me when I moved to Dodge, I needed to meet the sheriff. And then Bill Thorpe walks up, big old cop up there. And he said, so I understand you want to meet the police chief. I said, yeah, but that way I can get along with you. <laughs> and he said, okay. And then Tom Faye, I don't know if you all 
no time fail. But I think he's got some sons here in our police department. You guys have been great friends. You remember the, uh, the 2000 proclamation that we had for through the Justice Department? You know, when they, they gave money to that, to that point, the police officers and the Air Force Marines. And I went to one of those functions and I said to him, I said, so why are you here? I said, I'm an activist. And he said, what do you mean you're an activist? I want security. shot or hurt because they don't like the police. And so I suggested that the police would rather than do their routines, get out the cars and meet the people. And then when anything goes down, oh, you know, they can say, oh, I know nothing to do. Why would you go to that problem? Solve the problem. Anyway, that's my position with uh, this great city. Like I said earlier, Things that he has done. I could never have done that by myself. And so, let him run for another term. <laughs> Lily, I just want to give you some. I just want to pay you some tribute. When I first was going to run for mayor, I had never. I was a state senator, state assembly. I did not know local governments. I probably didn't know very many people on the council even. And so I started to run for the position because North Las Vegas was going down the maelstrom, and you knew that, you know. And somebody said, "You go meet Willie Fields," and I said, "Who's he?" Because we've been in. He's been in North Las Vegas for years. I go. I heard of like Mrs. Fields. I've been here my whole <laughs> life too, but I've never heard of Willie Fields, you know. And so they sent me to this. Cross the street from the swap meet, you know, and I go over there and I, and I look in the, as I go in, I go, dude, there's a cat, there's a, a Corvette. I think it was a yellow Corvette at the time. And it's right there. I go, man, there's somebody out of town visiting here. Nobody has a Corvette in North Las Vegas. <laughs> and I go in there and I'm talking to this guy. I go, whose Corvette is that? He goes, that's mine. I went, you got to be kidding me, man. You're the only guy I know in North Las Vegas that owns a Corvette, man. This is cool, you know. So I would like to tell the police, if you see a yellow Corvette between here and the I-15, don't give him a ticket. It's Willie Fields Day, okay? <laughs> but, Willie, if you get up on the freeway and the highway patrol stop, you don't mention our names, you know? <laughs> but you have turned into be a great symbol of North Las Vegas. We lost Joe Neal, who was in the legislature for many years. And Pam and I knew Joe, but we didn't know he was un unwell, you know? And then we found out he passed. So we're looking to go and reach out to these mentors of ours of the past to to honor them and celebrate their lives with the service they've given to the city once again, Willie. And, and you were the first person that we're doing here today. So I just want to thank you so much for being a leader and an example and a kind human being. Thank and we you. love you from North Las Vegas' thank heart. You. I remember the day I met you. Yeah. You, you told me what you just did. I know. <laughs> I'm going to let the council say something. Uh, I, I can't agree more with what the mayor just said. You know, uh, Willie, uh, you know, we present uh, you know, on occasion proclamations like this to very deserving people, but uh, you're at a, a special level when it comes to that. You know, my knowing you for the past several years, working with Laura and myself on the nonprofit, the military events, you know, uh, your your bar is way higher. So uh, I appreciate. It's the worker. Uh, well, well, that's what it takes. Sometimes it takes a dedicated worker with uh, very, very strong passions for the community, and you fit that bill. So thank you so much for all you do. It's, it's really a privilege for me to know you. Well, um, as someone who uh, started off as a community activist, right, um, of course, I, I do different kind of things, but uh, I can always say that we all stand on the, we all stand on the shoulders of giants. Sometimes the giants are about five foot nine, right? And our, our, our slide of build, but what they do is they help create, they help build uh, the community around them. And with, with that, you know, yeah, you most definitely deserve that. You help build community, the same community I love. Thank you so very much. Yeah, thank you. So Mr. Fields this whole time was wondering, who's this guy standing by my right? 
We just met. We go back way back about five minutes. Yes. It's my honor to stand next to you as I learn about you and the service that you've given to our, our great city. And if we can get this meeting over with before the street lights come on, he's going to take me for a ride in his Corvette. So. <laughs> And if you do a slight turn, call the. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, come on up. Now, now, now. We, we've had so many uh, proclamations and events over here today. Probably have to cancel the actual uh, council meeting, which is, uh, okay. <laughs> this is really more important anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, I'm going to make this really short and sweet. Uh, I'm going to introduce uh, the president of uh, Sun City Aliante, Mr. Warren Geller. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have with me several board members. To my right, Ed Sloman, who is vice president, and Sonia Bankston Cullen, who is a director on our board. And I'd like to take this opportunity to limit my comments to three minutes, being very sensitive to, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, good night. <laughs> Thanks. No, that's fine, Willie. Uh, just for those who don't know, uh, Sun City Eliante is comprised of 2,028 homes and around 3,400 residents. We have with us today Damian Carrasco, our general manager, and Melanie... Hernandez, our assistant general manager, and behind her, Debbie Kent. These are the prime people that make our community move. Just to give you an idea, when um, it was announced that the vaccine would be available at the end of last year, I contacted Richard, and I've contacted Richard so many times that when he sees my name come up on his phone, he doesn't answer it. But I, I said, Richard, there are several things that I would like you to do for us. Number one, can you bump us up on the priority list for getting the vaccine? And number two, we don't want our residents to have to leave the community. I don't want them going somewhere and waiting two, three hours for the vaccine. Well, as normal, as is absolutely normal for Richard, he said, I'll see what I can do. And once again, never, ever disappointing me, suddenly the North Las Vegas Fire Department contacted 
our general manager, Aunt Damien, and we, we held six meetings, six gatherings, three different events were for two shots. The North Las Vegas Fire Department, I really can't say enough good things about them. They are highly, highly professional. They are courteous, and without them, I'm not sure what we would have done as a community. We can't thank you enough for what you've done to better the lives of at least 1,300 of our residents, and that means a lot. You've touched every one of us, and we are sincerely, sincerely appreciative of what you've done. Um, we have something, a plaque. Chief? Yep, Chief Calhoun and Anderson. Please come down. The plaque reads, thank you to the North Las Vegas Fire Department. Joseph D. Calhoun, Fire Chief, Travis Anderson, Deputy Chief, Frank Simone, EMS Coordinator, and Fernando Juarez, Healthcare Coordinator for providing the COVID-19 vaccinations to the Sun City Eliante community from the Sun City Eliante community and the Board of Directors, April 7, 2021. In addition, we have a little small token of our appreciation. Gentlemen, you are an honor to your community I now realize more than ever, and I've lived a good many years, what it means to have people run into danger instead of away from danger. And you took care of our people as if we were your own, and we are deeply, deeply appreciative. Thank you. Uh, I just want to say on behalf of the department and, and the gentleman here, um, we thank you for this. We're, we're not deserving of this. It was truly, truly an honor for us to come and spend, spend several weekends with your community. Uh, it was uplifting for us. The people were so thankful. And this whole experience with providing the vaccines has just been uh, an incredible experience for us as, as public safety personnel. Um, you know, you kind of mentioned we treated you, you know, just like you were our own. That, that our, our motto at the fire department is our city, our people, our duty, and, and we completely believe in that. And uh, so it was an honor to work with all of you. You guys treated us like part of your family. Uh, you, you, you pitched in. You were part of the group. And uh, it, it was just it was a fabulous time uh, spending time with your folks. So I, I, we can't thank you enough, um, and, and thank you for the recognition.
<laughs> Richard wants me to adjourn the meeting. We had already had a good enough meeting, he thinks. But we better go on a little bit. So we're going to move on to council items. Mayor Pro Tem Barone? Uh, thank you very much, Mayor. Um, and it's, um, like I said, it's, it's one of the things where we definitely stand on the, on, on, on the shoulders of giants. Got a whole bunch of things happening uh, all around town. Uh, of public interest, of course, we have a, a, a great uh, drive through COVID-19 vaccination clinic in uh, the city of North Las Vegas uh, City Hall uh, parking lot this Saturday, April 10th from 9 to 3 p.m. I, I don't know if it's too late to sign up, but I think they can still get on to vax nlv.com uh, to make a reservation, right? Thank you very much for concern. <laughs> Thank you so very much. I'm happy you're here. Um, Mayor, uh, this uh, it, pretty soon here on, on April 20th will be the 75th anniversary of our city. Our, our police officers probably wear that, that, that 1946 on, 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 their, on their patch. And uh, our, our good friend is Jeanette Revere from Buscando Estrellas will be doing, a, uh, of course, a celebration, uh, the annual Fiesta CNLV, on Tuesday, April uh, 20th from 5 to 7 p.m. here at the, at the North Bay City Hall Courtyard. Um, of course, it's going to be socially distanced. It'll be small but tasteful. And we'll be celebrating, observing our 75th year anniversary of our, uh, of our uh, city's existence. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, I, uh, uh, I, of course, I grew up, I, I, it seemed like uh, half the, 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 the fantastic times in my life were uh, around the corner here at the old city hall with the adjoining uh, library. And I'm very happy to say that uh, our, our, my beloved North Las Vegas Library District is among 30 finalists for the 2021 National Medal for Museum and Library Service. And so we, I wanted to give congrats to uh, Director uh, Forrest Lewis and entire library team on the nomination. And uh, by the way, uh, as the city manager pointed out to us, our, our fantastic library team was recently uh, featured on the news for their work, not just uh, working in library, but for de delivering all sorts of services for our, our residents, you know, during this uh, time of pandemic. So uh, a big congratulations to them. Anyhow, the winners for this uh, prestigious award will be announced in late spring. And so we're hoping uh, our team wins the medal. Finally, um, you know, again, I, I, it's always astounding to see the quality of the people who work for our city, right? And uh, I wanted just to make a, a quick shout out to, uh, to Tom Brady. No, not that Tom Brady, our Tom Brady, you know. <laughs> he, our Tom Brady is much more handsome, right? And he doesn't wear Uggs. Um, the Nevada chapter of the American Public Works Association nominated our, 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 uh, our director here, Tom Brady, for the Top 10 Public Works Leaders of the Year Award for the second year in a row. So if you're out there, Tom, congrats. Keep up the great work. Good report. Councilman Churchill. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, mine's uh, very short and sweet tonight. Uh, it's just going to surround, uh, let me take this off. It's just going to surround uh, my meeting uh, just a little while ago with, uh, with Skyview and uh, the YMCA group that runs uh, our generational facility up there on Centennial uh, and all of the good things that they're doing. Um, Cass was present uh, we had Bill Legere, who uh, brought copies of uh, the uh, local map showing exactly what's, uh, what will be built up there around the, uh, around the, uh, the YMCA. And, um, you know, I just want to uh, thank that team up there. Um, uh, Mr. Fraser was there before, but now we have Breezy, who is in charge of uh, that the particular facility. And uh, I had an opportunity to meet all the staff as well. And uh, I, I will tell you that uh, they've got some great things planned for that, um, that YMCA expansion and stuff at the appropriate time. Of course, that whole area is booming up there with the job creation zone and watercolors coming in there. So, uh, you know, we look forward to serving the community uh, in that area and, and every other area, up to and including our, uh, our veterans uh, who have children over there stationed both at Nellis and Creech. So uh, it was a really very, uh, very informative meeting for me uh, and, and very productive for, for everybody. So uh, I, thank, uh, I thank Mike and the team up there for doing a good job. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councilman Black. Thank you, Mayor. This past Monday, the 5th, uh, our police department participated in an awareness and education 
event surrounding Nevada's law of change lanes for bicycles and give three feet. We're one of 33 um, states in the nation that have a, a three feet law and one of five that have the provision that if motorists can change lanes safely, if there is a left or adjacent lane, they should change lanes to pass cyclists. And in order to educate and enforce um, that law in our community, um, five of our traffic motor officers, uh, Lieutenant Cannon and some of his awesome motor officers, as well as two um, motor officers from the Clark County School District uh, Metro came out and helped us. We had a great event where Sergeant Campbell from CCSD Police rode his uh, bicycle up and down from Ann Road on Simmons North to uh, through Aliante to the 215 and back, a two-mile loop up and back. Uh, he did 37 miles over a three-hour period. Um, he has a special device mounted to his handlebar that measures the distance of vehicles that pass him. And the closest vehicle was 15 inches. The closest vehicle that was large was a gravel truck that was 26 inches from him. Wow. They There were 86 violators, 65 were stopped, and 53 were were cited. Uh, it was on the uh, the news to create awareness. Uh, 837 cyclists died in the nation um, in 2018. And here in Nevada, 35.6% of all traffic fatalities deal with a pedestrian or a cyclist. So really, it's just a way to, we all uh, um, need to use the roads, use them together, use them safely, and do our part and be safe. So uh, I just wanted to say thank you to the police department for supporting this great awareness campaign. Impressive. Councilman, Councilwoman Goins Brown. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to say hi to my Snuma Puma babies um, and just let you know that our micro school program is still thriving and doing quite well. And I think next council meeting we'll be sharing a video with you that was um, done by Universe Creative. Her name is Meg Griffiths. Out of she's a has a production company out of California, and we were featured on all social media platforms. So please visit that so you can see the great video that was done. Um, just continuing with the great vaccination efforts, we hosted a pop-up clinic Saturday at the Martin Luther King Senior Center, which was extremely well received. Um, we we're busy throughout the day. Lots of folks got shot, so we're grateful for that and just going to continue those efforts, as Mayor Pro Tem mentioned this weekend. Um, and also at the Senior Center today, I hosted an event called Baby's Bounty, and it was a pop-up clinic. And the goal of Baby's Bounty, it's a nonprofit um, and what they do is they help families in need with newborn supplies and education efforts. We gave out diapers, formula, wipes, um, and baby food today. Um, the line was wrapped around the center before 9 o'clock, and we even had to call their warehouse and order more diapers because the need was so great out there. And I attribute a lot of that to the pandemic and to families and moms especially that are struggling. So we're looking, hopefully, to partner with Baby's Bounty, hint, hint, um, just to possibly bring this more often um, to various places in North Las Vegas, and they're very excited, and it went very well today. That's and then one, ask, one other thing, um, over at Craig Ranch, Craig Ranch last month, we held a Salute to Healthcare Workers concert, and the band was called Good Vibrations, and they were really, really good, and it was just a fun time by all that attended and actually watched it virtually. Thank you very much. Can you give me an idea how many people actually came to the baby bouncy pop up event? We they don't have they didn't have the final numbers before I left today. Um, we had another organization that partnered today as well, and they brought over three hundred and fifty bags of food for for families that had older kids. The truck emptied out within it probably the first hour, and so they they said if we do it again they will bring 400 to 500 bags because we we just ran out because the the need was so great congratulations you all work so hard in your districts i appreciate being in the council with you thank you we're going to move on to the public forum this is time set aside to comment and posted agenda items if you want to speak on any item listed on the consent agenda business or ordinances introduction only now is that time Madam Security Clerk, do we have any blue cards or post agenda items, written comments, or callers on the phone? Mayor Lee, we have no callers on the phone, and I did provide to council an email from George Arding about item 19, which is the CIP plan. Uh, he specifically states that projects 10504 and 10553 would cause a major impact to the Aliante um, area, since both projects in the same year would impact north and south arteries. So... That's all I have. There's no Thank calls you. in the line. I think Director Daffern is going to take care of that on, at the appropriate time. 
So if no one here in the audience coming forth, we're going to close the public forum and moving on to the agenda. Item one, approve city council regular meeting agenda for April 7th, 2021. Mayor and council's our recommendation to approve the agenda as published. Thank you. Council, any comments or questions on the agenda? If not, the chair will take a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve the city council agenda as published. We have a motion. Please cast your vote. Items approved. Moving on to the consent agenda. Mayor and Council, the consent agenda consists of items 2 through 16. It's our recommendation to approve as published. Thank you. Once again, Council, any comments or questions? If not, the chair will take a motion to approve the consent agenda. Move to approve. We have a motion. Please cast your vote. Items approved. Moving on to set public future hearing dates. Item number 17, set the date of any appeals filed or required public hearings from the City Planning Commission meetings. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. I so direct you to set hearing dates as necessary. Mayor, so noted. Moving on to business. Item number 18, presentation, discussion, and or action regarding the tentative budget for fiscal year 2021-2022 for possible action. Thank you. Director Hardy. Welcome. Perfect. Uh, Mayor Lee, members of council, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today. The purpose of my presentation is to give you an update regarding our progress on the fiscal year 2022 budget. Um, with your approval, we'll submit this tentative plan to the Department of Taxation as required by April 15th, which is next week. So. With that, uh, please remember that we'll be back next month to provide an, an update on the final budget. So this is just tentative. Um, with that, I'll go ahead and uh, jump straight to the next slide, please. I'd like to highlight just a couple of things about the plan. First off, uh, total appropriations um, across all funds total $754 million. Now, last year it was 683, so there is an increase in this year's budget. Um, the plan covers salaries and benefits for 1,531 total FTEs, which again is an increase relative to last year. And uh, if adopted as presented, the ending fund balance is projected to be for the general fund um, $30.3 million at the fiscal year end of 2022, which represents uh, just under 15% funded status, which is about a two months worth of, uh, worth of, worth of reserves. Okay. Next slide, please. So in this slide, we just wanted to give you a side-by-side -side comparison of our projected 2021 relative to our fiscal year 2022 uh, tentative budget. As you can see, revenues are in line with prior year, uh, slightly increased, and those are based on inputs from uh, the Department of Taxation. Um, the increase in expenses is primarily due to uh, CIP projects, which cover uh, uh, much-needed deferred capital maintenance projects and, and other items. Um, I also wanted to note that you'll see that there is a reduction in PILT as required. We are reducing PILT every year, but please know that we still are relying on a $20 million transfer for just general operations. Next slide, please. So here we just wanted to give you a graphical representation of the revenues for the general fund. As you can see, our largest source of, uh, single source of income is, is of revenues, excuse me, is uh, a C-tax. And second to that is licenses and permits. Between licensing, permits, and C-tax, that makes up 66 or two-thirds percent of our general fund revenues. Uh, next slide, please. Regarding the expenses, as you can see, by far the largest uh, thing that we spend our, our general fund dollars on is public safety. So public safety makes up 64% of our expenditures. The 22% in general government covers, you know, human resources, finance, legal, all the support functions that, that make it possible to do what we do. With that, uh, I know this has been very brief. Again, this is still tentative. Uh, we just wanted to give you an opportunity to ask any questions or, or uh, resolve any concerns you have before we submit this next week. Thank you. Uh, just a question going back to page, where is it? I was looking at the C tax page. Um, yes. How, how have we been affected? I know the city manager at, at one time predicted it would be a certain level, but it didn't get as bad because we caught up just a little bit in, uh, in 
tourism and stuff. But can you give an idea of how the, how the CTAX is treating us? You bet. So uh, fiscal year 2020, which is now in the books, or um, uh, it was a drop from 2019. So the prior years before the pandemic, we were seeing um, a large increases in CTAX every year. Um, yet in due to the pandemic, we did see a drop. Now the drop wasn't nearly as high as we thought it was going to be. Thank goodness, uh, I think in large part due to federal stimulus and other things, you know, eviction moratoriums and other things, uh, the CTAX has not dropped nearly as much as we, th we thought it would, but it was still a drop. Now we are projected, and we have not finished 2021, but it, I do believe that 2021 is going to exceed slightly 2020. So we are back into a growth, but it's just slightly. Okay. And then a follow-up would be with the LVCBA, the room tax. Is that stabilized, or is it still dropping? Or that, That's a good question. Keep, uh, keep in mind, uh, room tax for us is a fairly minor or, or small portion of our revenues. I mean, it's, 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 it helps, but uh, I believe that we've seen a significant drop in room tax in, in, in our allocation, um, yet it's such a small portion of our general fund revenues that it hasn't had a large impact. Thank you. Those are my questions. Councilor, any comments or questions? This is probably a good time for the city manager to say what a good finance director we have. And we want to thank you for running this city so efficiently. <laughs> I mean, today Joe Calhoun and the fire department got up here and they got a great award. But if it wasn't for leadership and you directing and Joe and you guys working together on it, I guess I'd like to have a moment. You just talk to us about how you see the finances are with you work with Will and, you know, and the relationship you guys have. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and this is good because I wanted to clarify that it was not my projection. Oh, I yeah. just knew there was no, no, an yeah. assumption. Mine are usually more accurate okay. than that. Um, no, it was an assumption that, that was made. Um, it was by Jeremy Aguero. And I think actually um, I was very surprised how accurate um, it was for the um, – specific months because we're we're generally two months behind in getting c tax dollars and he was able to project it and i mean he was he was really close <clears throat> the projection that we talked about last year with, at council was a uh, three-year um, one of the things that we've done in north las vegas that was a little bit different than what was done before and it's been very beneficial to us was started by um, darren adair when he was cfo was doing a five to seven year projection and so on the three-year outlook, we were looking at $107 million uh, structural deficit, essentially, based on the, the impact of sea tax dollars. Um, we have seen um, better than expected sea tax. We've also um, seen it not being as long of a, of a, a challenge in talking with um, Virginia Valentine and those in the resort um, industry. We're starting to to see less vacancies uh, within our rooms. But we still know that we have um, some challenges moving forward. We're just very happy that the $107 million has now turned into more like $43 million. Wow. Still, still a deficit, but it's, a, it's one that keeps moving. Um, I think that, that Will's done a tremendous job and his team, they've done a tremendous job. This budget process is not an easy thing. Um, and it's a juggle that we have to, to do. And the uh, no doubt the action that was taken to freeze, because um, we just didn't know what was going on. Uh, we, we had no clue what was going on. So we froze all, all um, capital expenditures last year. We froze hiring um, last year. Then through attrition, we were able to um, not fill in some of those positions, which meant that um, – our employees had to do more with less, and our residents, um, you would have expected that they would have seen a reduction in services. However, that was really balanced out. Um, during the pandemic, I believe that our residents actually saw a dramatic increase in services. We just saw an award that was presented to our fire department for providing vaccinations um, and all the efforts and things that they've done. Those are not things that are in any job description. They're not things that are services that are routinely provided, but because of the nature of the pandemic, traditional city services that we would provide like libraries or um, rec centers that are open for kids and um, after school programs, those were all suspended. So we were able to take, um, 
the normal efforts and resources that would have been invested in the delivery of those services and move them to other services. So I think the residents of North Las Vegas received a, a much higher degree of services than, than many other uh, jurisdictions provided because of the efforts that, that were made by the finance team, by council, by management to quickly react. And then once we received the federal dollars, uh, from the CARES dollars, being able to use those strategically to invest into the community and help shore up the community, ensure that our residents didn't feel pains that they might have felt other places. And I think that having Will and his, uh, you know, team's leadership, I was actually on another item was teasing him on the way down here, like, your numbers better be right, buddy. Um, and they always are. And so I, I appreciate having that. Um, We've made some investments over the last few years in investing in some um, in, uh, IT infrastructure that allows us to get more real-time data. Um, we've been able to increase the uh, size of, of staff in, in finance. is something that's been reported repeatedly on, on the CAFR that we've needed to do. And Will continues to work with that staff as well as our directors to get financial reporting back to him sooner so that we have a much better, a better finger on the pulse and that finger on the pulse of the finances isn't in, inside a glove that is masked by a thick sweater, but it's right there finger directly on the pulse. And that's been very beneficial to us. So I just want to, want to thank them for their efforts. Um, we did not think we would be in this position last year, but we also didn't think we would be in this position two years ago. So we're, we're, not as good as we thought we were going to be in two years, but we're not as bad as we thought we were going to be last year. So it's a, it's a, it's a growing place to be, and, and the, the team has provided very timely information to help us make good decisions. Thank you. Is anybody going to say anything nice about Will or just me? Yeah, yeah no, Mayor. Um, again, um, we, we always make the joke, you know, that um, if you need to get something done, you go to the, quote, bean, the bean counters first, right? Um, I, uh, I, I have come to uh, place a lot of trust, I think, you know, of course, with uh, his uh, predecessor there, Darren Adair, which I, and I think that success that he brought to building this team that, that, that now uh, that he's part of, it, can't, it cannot be uh, misunderstood if the... Uh, I think if the public only knew um, the amount of, of, of effort and uh, the, the kind of things that uh, when uh, Mr. Adar came in and uh, brought this um, new attitude where everything's scrutinized, where, you know, we, we go back and they have uh, gone back and scrutinized, you know, um, many uh, contracts and to make sure that the people who are partners in the community pay what they're supposed to the city well, with these audits, right? It's amazing. And uh, a, a lot of the success, again, is attributed, as, as you say, to the actual uh, financial engine of our city, which is, of course, you know, in this case, governed by you know our uh, our uh, the the, uh, the accounting department. Um, you guys are doing a fantastic job, and thank you so very much. And um, I hope to be able to go to you and uh, vet a few other projects that I'd like to see in, in the downtown. But it all comes from the very careful accounting of the public trust, you know, through your department. Thank you so very much, Councilman Churchill. <laughs> I don't think I have anything good to say. <laughs> that, that was a setup by the mayor, okay. But no, most definitely, most definitely. Uh, I, I, I see just how you operate. I, I see how thorough you are by the meetings we were at just a little while ago upstairs. Uh, you know, I appreciate just how hard, uh, you know, how hard an effort you put into this job, which is very, very difficult. You know, you, um, you and a lot of other people that are, I guess technically behind the scenes, uh, make our decisions up here once every two weeks uh, uh, look easy or a, a lot better than what they could be if it wasn't for all of you. So truly, uh, I, I thank you for what you do for the city and us. Councilman Black. I kind of like how Ryan put it. You know, two years ago, we thought we might be in a better place now, but last year we thought we might be in a worse place. And I think it has a lot to do with you know, there's some irony in that. I think that has a lot to do with the, the diligence and the fiscal responsibility and attention to detail and the, and the sacrifices. The decisions that have been made in recent years have been really filled with strategic sacrifice. And I, I think that, you know, we look at things outside of 
the pandemic, um, you know, we look at our credit rating, we look at, you know, the, in, in, you know, the improvements we've been able to make internally with out, um, you know, overextending ourselves. And, um, I just want to say that we have the will for success, both literally and figuratively, if that makes any sense. Councilwoman. I just don't know how you do it because you're always so very calm, cool, and collective. Maybe we just don't see that other side of you, but um, I appreciate that. And we're just a, a city of outside-the-box innovative thinkers, and it's truly a team effort. And to have a great leader such as yourself is just an additional asset to our North Las Vegas family. So thank you for all you, for all you do. Thank you. Uh, Mayor and Council, I appreciate your kind words. Please know that uh, you have a great budgeting team that make your finance director look good, but really uh, Gary McDonald and the team, Justin and Michael, they do a fabulous job. And again, our accounting team is working really hard to make improvements. I really appreciate everything that Debbie Barton does and her team. So really, you have a, a really hardworking, uh, intelligent, professional accounting and budgeting team. So, thank you very much. And thank, thank you. you for the presentation. Very positive. Um, there'll be no motion. It was just a presentation. We also have another presentation, but I'll let council, I mean, the city manager bring that forward. Item number 19, presentation, discussion, and or action regarding the proposed 2022-2026 capital improvement plan. Director Dapper, and this is going to be wonderful. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. I don't know if I shut that off or not. Before I get started with the presentation, I once again need to thank the directors and the chiefs for all the work on the plan. I think you know it's a team effort that puts something this big together. Um, also, I really need to thank Teresa Cochran and uh, Mike Hudgens for their hard work. They did all the heavy lifting. They did all the modeling on the plan and um, put all the numbers together for finance and budgeting. So big thanks to those guys. Um, as you guys may recall, the, um, the capital improvement plan is really a five-year plan that we, re that we redo every year. It's really a conglomeration of various funding sources that um, make up the plan. They're also for large capital improvement items like roads and bridges. They're also they're, we also uh, list the um, large capital items like fire engines and heavy equipment and machinery that we put in the plan. Once a project is selected for the plan, it's really prioritized on an as-needed basis, and it obviously changes from year to year. The projects themselves, once the proponent um, puts a project forward. They have to forecast some of the revenues that go along with the plan. They also have to put together a timeline on when the project's going to be completed or the items purchased. Um, the, the proponent also has to do a little speculation on how the money is actually going to be spent throughout the program. And usually these projects due to their large capital outlay are, um, they become a fixed asset for the city. And once they become a fixed asset, they're usually a depreciable item over time. Um, once again, this year in the plan, we put in the operation and maintenance dollars into the plan that will support the project or the capital item once they become uh, an actual fixed asset for the city. But one thing to notice when you see the plan, if the project's completed in, say, 2023, the operation and maintenance budget will move from the plan to the actual operating dollars in the department that supports the project. So with that, I guess we can go to the next slide, Kathy. This year's plan is a five-year plan, of course. It's uh, about $615 million with about $281 million to be spent in year one. Next slide, please. This slide really shows a nice bar graph of the last 16 years of five-year capital plans. And all the, though the plans kind of ebbed and flows over the years, if you look at the last six or seven years, you notice the plan's pretty consistent around the five to $600 million mark. Next slide. Here's the annual breakdown of the five-year plan. You'll notice year one's about $281 million, as I mentioned earlier. And it uh, tapers off pretty quickly after that. But what I've noticed um, with the last 10 years or so capital plans, we usually have a very aggressive first year. And we predict uh, some pretty, pretty large expenditures in year one. But what really happens is Time, time frames slip a little bit. Sometimes the financial part of it moves. And this really dampens out over the years, so it's not quite as dramatic as it may seem right here. Uh, next slide, please. This slide is really a breakdown of all the revenue sources that go into the plan. It's broken down by percentages, 
and it actually has every line item in the plan that it's funded by either a fund or an outside revenue source. And what I've done for you is highlighted some of the more um, prevalent sources. So if you look to the left there, you'll see the Clark County Regional Flood Control District. That makes up about 21% of the overall $615 million, which is a large chunk of the uh, plan itself. And if you look to the right side of the table there, you'll see the fuel revenue indexing funding from the RTC, motor vehicle fuel tax, and question 10 funding. And if you look to a little bit to the left of that, you'll also see there's some uh, Nevada Department of Transportation NDOT funding and some internal motor vehicle fuel tax fund and fund balance. If you add all of those sources up, that'll make about 30% of the $615 million. So when you think about it, Clark County Regional Flight Control and Regional Transportation Commission make up over 50% of the $615 million. It's a large input to the plan. Down there in the lower right-hand corner there, you'll see the Utility Enterprise Fund, a pretty large part of the plan also. It makes up over 19% of the plan. Next one, please, Kathy. Thank you. Looking at the data a little bit differently, there's about 11 programs in the capital improvement plan. And once again, if you added up all the RTC funding, NDOT funding, inner city funding, you'll see the transportation is about $183 million of the $615 million. Uh, flood control is about $136 million. Once again, that's about 21% of the plan. And then if you look at the utility enterprise fund, both the sewer and water, if you added those together, that's about $125 million of the plan. So those three funding sources make up about 70% of the plan. Okay, next slide. Wrapping things up here. Um, the capital improvement plan, as I mentioned, $615 million over five years. We believe it focuses on the really the current needs of the city at this time. And as always, the plan's fiscally constrained. And I appreciate your time and attention this evening. Answer any questions if you have any. I do. Would you explain to the council and me how the capital improvement plan, who sits at the table, how you plan for the future of our community for the next five years? Sure. Um, there's really three major components to it. There's the internal money that we look at. There's general fund revenue, 268 revenue, and, and uh, actually the vehicle fund, which is part of the general fund revenue. But we meet together as a group all the department directors to get together with the chiefs. And we look at um, the available funding finance kind of gives us an idea of which each funding source has available for expenditures. Probably more importantly of what we need to keep in reserves. And we get together and uh, discuss which project we think might be the most important to meet, you know, some of the strategic goals that the council has put together. The outside funding sources are a little different. Most of those are, uh, fuel tax based, um, the regional flood control, of course, is sales tax based, but the regional flood control is based on how many basins and how many um, drainage features we have in our jurisdiction, and we get a percentage of the money based on what we think we can put forward each year, and we kind of balance that valley wide. All the department directors, uh, Clark County, Henderson, and uh, City of Vegas, we get together as directors and try to look at the model with regional flood control and determine which projects we think are most important to move forward. And that really happens at the RTC level also, Mayor, that we meet with the RTC groups and all the directors get together and we look at um, how much money is available to spend from year to year. We put together a 10-year program for the Regional Transportation Commission and then we have to move things uh, depending on what type of funding is available. Thank you. And I noticed the capital improvement plan, you put line by line what's going to happen the, the whole plan is so right. council yeah, you're able to go through here and figure out what's in your district what you can expect that's exciting you know to track that for councilman um is anybody else have a question of the director you'll actually receive a book on that too mayor when, once we finalize the book you know, mayor, just, a, just a comment um yeah uh sit, uh, no since i, I sit up there uh, on the uh, uh on the rtc and of course the flood control committee um, I'm always, you know, very grateful uh, that uh, we have these regional partners to help us with uh, the, the, these projects that really are, you know, you have to look at the, at the as, as you say, Mayor, the 30,000-foot uh, uh, level, um, drainage programs that, uh, that, that are funded here. Eventually, that's going to be something that will, will help our friends uh, who are downstream. 
But uh, uh, again, uh, please uh, uh, extend my thanks, you know, to uh, to your uh, colleague uh, directors from the other uh, entities uh, uh, in working with RTC and flood control to make this all happen. For sure, I will. Thank you, Councilman Churchio. Uh, thank you, Dale, for that. Um, just a, a kind of a question, more educational for me. Um, how, looking at the budget over here for, for these coming years, how do you blend those allocations for that work uh, with the available employees that we have? And do you have any priorities that from a council perspective, you know, I can only speak for myself. Uh, we, uh, I get calls on, uh, on roads. I get calls on uh, cracked roads, signage that has been fading, you know, because a lot of communities have been up like in the 20 years and the sun just kills the, uh, the signage, you know, the color. How do you, do you prioritize certain things that you get through a city, city track to know that those, those, those things should come maybe first or second? And, um, uh, what impact uh, does the uh, the available employees have uh, to these projects here? Yeah, we we try to blend councilman the, the different ward the needs of the different wards. Um, as you know, South of Lake Meads in the older area of the city, and it it demands a lot of revenue in that area to fix and repair the roads. They're quite a bit behind, say, the Aliante communities as far as road maintenance and road repair. So what we try to do is balance the money between all the different um, wards on how we distribute the funds. But as far as internal staff goes, um, we've always been a little short on um, signage and striping type personnel. And recently we've moved forward with hiring new people for our traffic operations group and our, which the signage and striping falls in. Um, we've been way behind on repairing signs for years. You're right. They, they do fade out, and what we've done in the last year or two is we've added those to our road maintenance program that we get with the RTC funding. Previous years, we simply repaired roads and repaired sidewalk, curb and gutter, and things of that nature. Now we've added street lights where we're trying to convert over to the LED type street lights and save money that way from the high pressure sodium lights, and we've also added signage in that. So, and as Councilwoman going Brown knows we recently added a, uh, several signs in an area that we just rehabbed in uh, south of Lake Mead. Um, we went in and redid all the roadways, and then at the same time, we got the RTC to pay for all the new signs in the neighborhood, which really worked out well. And that's what we're, get, we're trying to do in the future, too. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, you've given a great presentation, so... Um, Open this up for public. Oh, I don't have public comment on this. So what we're going to do is call for a motion to approve the capital improvement plan. Uh, Mayor, let's make a motion to uh, approve this capital uh, development plan. If we have a motion, please cast your vote. Items 100% approved. Thank you very much. And tell Mike Cudgens hello for us. Right. Moving on to ordinances, final action. Mayor, item 20, pass and adopt ordinance number 3071 and ordinance to repeal and replace chapter 8 of title 2 of the North Las Vegas Municipal Code and repeal ordinance numbers 885, 1472, 2059, 2495, 2573, 2620, 2687, 2739, 2721, 2790, and 2984 to update chapter 8 to be consistent with the city charter as submitted by Assembly Bill 50 in the 2019 Nevada Legislative Session and providing further matters properly relating thereto. Thank you. Ms. Rainer, would you want to explain a little bit about this? Yes, Mayor. So Mayor and Council, currently Chapter 8 of Title II of the City Code contains odd number year election requirements that need to be updated to even year uh, election requirements. This ordinance, in fact, makes those changes. In addition to those changes, it provides the following. It's updating the code to match city election processes with Clark County Election Department as a result of using vote centers and services provided via the city's interlocal contract with Clark County. It updates 2.08210 to provide a more equitable way of managing a tie vote 
at a primary election, uh, and it also removes the requirement to publish an election proclamation and instead publish notices as required by NAC and NRS. There is significant cost savings in not publishing the election proclamation as well as the legal notices in accordance to NAC and NRS. We published this in the past. We've published the same information pretty much three times, and so we would like to remove the proclamation requirements so we can save money. Lastly, this uh, ordinance will also update and add a precinct to Ward 1 and 1 to Ward 4 to be consistent with the precincts as defined by Clark County Election Department. And lastly, it repeals the previous ordinances. Thank you. So with that, uh, staff recommends council would approve this, pass and adopt this ordinance. Nope. Thank you for that presentation. Councilor, any comments or questions? If not, the chair will take a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve ordinance number 3071. We have a motion. Please cast your vote. It's unanimous. It's approved. Good job, Catherine. Moving on to ordinances. Introduction only. Mayor, Council, item 21, introduce ordinance number 3067, an ordinance related to zoning, reclassifying approximately 2.37 plus or minus acres in the zoning map of North Las Vegas from a C1 neighborhood commercial district to a PUD, PID, plan unit development, planned infill development district, ZN 342020 Diamond Valley Active Adult Community for a 59-unit senior multifamily complex for property located west of Valley Drive, approximately 270 feet south of Craig Road, and providing for other matters properly related thereto. Item 22, introduce ordinance number 3068, an ordinance related to zoning, reclassifying approximately 39.41 plus or minus acres in the zoning map of North Las Vegas from an OL, Open Land District, to an M2, General Industrial District, ZN01, 2021 Belt and Nellis for property located north of Belt Road between Clark County 215 and Union Pacific Railroad and providing for other matters properly related thereto. Item 23, introduce ordinance number 3069, an ordinance related to zoning reclassifying approximately 8.87 plus or minus acres in the zoning map of North Las Vegas from an OL open land district to an M2 general industrial district, ZNO2 2021. Tropical Speedway Commerce Center 2 for property located at the northwest corner of Tropical Parkway and Beasley Drive and providing for other matters property related thereto. And item 24, introduced ordinance number 3070, an ordinance related to zoning reclassifying approximately 6.5 plus or minus acres in the zoning map of North Las Vegas from a C2 general commercial district to a PUD plan unit development district, ZN03 2021, Noble Peak, for a 70 lot single family attached subdivision for property located west of Scott Robinson Boulevard and approximately 581 feet north of Craig Road and providing for other matters properly related thereto. Thank you, Director Jordan. Moving on to city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. I, I don't have anything else to add or report at this time. I was just going to, I wasn't sure if I was going to get an opportunity during the budget presentation, so I'm I said what I wanted to say. Thank you. Well, I might add one question. Um, of course, the legislature is just about at halfway now, and I know we're monitoring that quite well. And I just, you know, we just had a census report, and the redistricting will come up and stuff like that. What, what are you? We will. I know you're in the back, but do we get the census dialed in where we agree with the numbers and and we're satisfied? Um, I, I don't know about if we we haven't gotten it yet. So one of the things we are doing is we are having, I believe it's just in a couple of weeks, we're having um, uh, Judge Kessler who redistrict for North Las Vegas in 2014. Um, you'll see on your, your calendars that he'll be coming and visiting with you just in preparation for the redistricting that we're going to have to do in the city of North Las Vegas. I do believe because we're not receiving, I, I can't recall the specific date. I know um, the director Luke talked with me about it, but I know the legislature is going to have to go into a special session in order to consider redistricting because we're not expected to get the census raw data back in time for them to be able to consider it during the regular session. So that's something that they're already preparing for. The governor will need to call them back into a session to do that. 
Um, if you recall the maybe, but the current um, state lines that we have for our congressional districts as well as our assembly and state districts, they were actually created by a three judge panel. So they, they, the legislature last go around were unable to, uh, to do this. And it was judicially created, which is why you don't see quite as much gerrymandering as you normally see. You also see nest, nesting within assembly districts or inside the Senate district. So um, we'll have to see what they do at the state level. I know for our uh, purposes, we're not going to wait four years um, to redistrict. We're going to make sure that um, the wards are set and redistrict in time for the next election. You know, the way the growth is, I don't think the lines are going to move much. You know what I mean? Gross has just been straight up the hill. But it's very important, you know, that we have one man, one vote rule. So we're, we're, when I got here, Ryan, they hadn't done it in four years, I think, or three years. So we, I'm glad you're on top of that. Um, yes, ma'am. So when they look at that, are they looking at current residential developments that are already in construction or future ones? Do they look at all of that as well? No, the, no, it's it's people. Okay. Um, but what they do do is they they do update it, which is why we took a pretty strong position in the legislature on the demographer and the way the demography is done in the state of Nevada because the census data is update, updated by the Bureau every year. Um, and those are fairly um, – they're pretty accurate, but they're also fairly sophisticated formulas that they use based on the existing population because de depending on the demographic makeup of the population depends on the birth rate and death rate. So we know that, that some demographics have a higher death rate or based on their age, they, they don't have as long of life expectancy. So that formula includes all of that. So we naturally see a higher growth because we happen to – our community is made up of higher growth populations, if that makes sense. That was interesting. I didn't realize that they were that accurate on death and births. That's good. Um, nothing else to report? No, sir. Thank you. For, any other questions for the city manager? We don't see any. We will close that and move on to the public forum. Now is the time set aside. For the public speak on issues not in the agenda, speakers are limited to three minutes. Remember, council may hear these items, but we need not take action on them tonight on any items raised in the public forum. Madam City Clerk, do we have anyone online, any blue cards, or any written comments that you'd like to give to us? Mayor Lee, we have none of the above. Thank you. We've had a great meeting, great presentations at the early part of it. Um, I'm very proud of the great things that are happening in this city and the presentations that were made for such worthy reasons and worthy causes. So with that, we are going to close the public forum and this meeting is adjourned.